What's up, math fans? I want to talk about exponential functions, and I'm sure you've heard me talk about this before. I've also talked a lot about linear functions. Linear functions, you can tell when you have a table or a graph, you notice there's a constant rate of change. It's growing constantly, meaning there's a, a rise and a run, a rise and a run. But in exponential functions, it's a lot harder to see that because it's growing quickly. Um, I use the example of cell division in science. If you have a cell, you start with one cell and it divides, now you have two. If each of those cells divide, then you have four. So it starts to grow really, really fast. Um, I'll, let's say you have, again, you start, this is my phase. At phase zero, I have one cell. And then at phase one, uh, it divided. So now I have two cells. At phase two, those divide. Now I have four cells. At phase three, those divide. And now I have eight cells. What's going to happen in the next phase? I'm going to have 16 cells and then 32, and it grows really, really fast. So if you were to graph this, you might see a nice, I'll start at zero, one, and then it just grows really, really quickly. <clears throat> and you see a curve like that. All right. So that's what I call an exponential function. And if something is growing, we call that exponential growth. There is also, you learn in biology, something called exponential decay where things are dying really, really fast. Um, I'm not gonna get into that right now. I'm gonna stick with, a lot of these examples are about growth, uh, bank, money investments, growth there. Um, also, again, like I said, population, or cell division is growth, population is growth. You hear about the bunny, and or there's two bunnies, and then they each have two bunnies, and then those each have two bunnies. So, a lot of this stuff is, is, is exponential, is growing really, really fast. So here's some stuff you have to know. f of x just means a function of x, I could have also written y, equals a times b to the x power. If I'm looking at this, and my variable is in the exponent, it's considered exponential. Um, a couple things you wanna notice is a, b are two different numbers, like here, that's 102, those are two different numbers. Notice the a is the coefficient, b is the base. You don't want to mix that up. The reason you don't want to mix that up is because you know PEMDAS tells you to do exponents or, or calculate the exponent before you multiply. So a lot of people make that foolish mistake and try to multiply A times B first. They might look here quickly and say, oh, 100 times 2, let me do that first. But no, you want to evaluate the exponent first. So if I'm asking you for F of 5, and this is the formula for F of X, I've replaced the X with a 5, means I'm going to replace X with 5. So this is 100 times 2 to the fifth power. And I'm not going to use a calculator, but I suggest you get one just so you can see what I'm doing. Um, so 2 to the fifth power, kind of like the, the growth that I just showed you here with the cell division. So I'm starting with 2, that 2 to the first is 2, then 4, then 8, right? Then 16, then 32. So 2 to the fifth power is 32. So Notice I did my exponents first, and now I'm ready to multiply. So that's 100 times 32, which is 32, uh, excuse me, 3200, also known as 3200. All right, so that's basically how you evaluate with exponents. So you gotta be careful with which one is the coefficient, which one is the base. Um, now here's a formula that you can Google, and this formula helps you calculate when you invest money, all right? So not only is it on probably your test and regions, but it's actually uh, banks use it if you're investing money and they compound the money. When you compound money, it means thanks for the money, we're going to wait a little while and then we're gonna give you interest. Then we're gonna take that money, wait a little while and give you interest on that money, which is now more than it was initially. So when you compound it, it means you count the new amount of money. So here's, um, actually I'm gonna give you an example, but let me do number two first. So in number two, I just wanna know that you're comfortable with exponents. So you have to be comfortable with exponents because when I'm teaching you, I'm assuming you already know how to evaluate two to the fifth without just running to the calculator. You gotta know two to the fifth means two times two times two times two times two. You gotta know that three squared right away is nine. You should definitely know your perfect squares. Two squared is four, I don't know, nine squared is 81. Stuff like that you gotta know. So they might throw some weird tricky stuff at you like this. Is six times 16 to the n power, is that the same as six times two to the four to the n power? And I know it gets a little crazy, so take it piece by piece. First of all, the coefficients are the same. 
So don't make the mistake and try to multiply 6 times 16. There's no need to do that. There's no need to do 6 times 2 either. In fact, you can kind of divide by 6 on both sides, and really you're just asking yourself, is 16 to the n, is that equal to, uh, excuse me, is that equal to 2 to the power of 4n? Well, I have no idea, but you, if you get comfortable with powers, you will recognize that 16 is really 2 to the something. So I'm going to rewrite that 16 as 2 to the fourth, all right? Get comfortable with your, your base of 2. 2, 4, uh, 8, 16, 32. So anything with a base of 2, you should be comfortable with. So I've rewritten the 16 as base 2. This is just a clue here that I should probably rewrite that. So I got uh, 2 to the fourth. I'm rewriting 16 as 2 to the fourth. And then I have to drop the n down. Is that equal to 2 to the 4n? Well, here's something you learned a long time ago. If you raise a power to a power, you actually multiply the exponents. So that's really 2 to the 4n. And yes, 2 to the 4n is equal to 2 to the 4n. So it's true. All right, as long as you don't fall into the trap of multiplying 6 times 16 or 6 times 2, that would throw you way off. You're good. So this is what I would call exponent manipulation. You take an exponent and you just rewrite it. Here's another example. Um, can you rewrite 81 as an exponential or as an ex with an exponent? So of course 81 to the first power, that's easy. Can you rewrite it uh, with a different base? Sure, you should be thinking, hmm, that's 9 squared. Can I make it harder for you? Try to rewrite it with a base of only 3. Pause it, do it, check my work. So 9 I know is 3 squared, right? And then I'm rewriting the 9 as 3 squared and then that squared carries over. So then what do I do here? Keep the base, multiply the exponents. 2 times 2 is 4. So 81 is really 3 to the 4th power. So that's just what I would call exponential manipulation. You just play with the base um, and rewrite it with exponents. So that's just a fun trick that you should get used to. You can't really teach that. You just got to understand powers. So first memorize your perfect squares and this will become a lot easier. Now let's get to a real world application. Let's say you have $600. I'm giving you $600 and I'm going to actually not give it directly to you. I'm going to invest it in a bank and it's going to get compounded annually. What that means is at the end of one year, annually is a year, at the end of one year, you get interest on it. And then they reinvest that money into the bank and then another year later you get more interest on it. Okay? And my rate is 1.6%. Here's something you got to know. How to turn a percent into a decimal quickly. You take the percent and move it to the left twice. You learn that. It's really like dividing by 100. Move the decimal to the left twice. Um, you learn that when, I don't know, fourth grade? So let's do that. And I have a formula here. And if, if you can tell the blue, I'm going to ignore the blue. The blue is if it's compounded anything that's not annually. But most problems I've noticed, especially in Algebra 1, compounded annually. So you can almost ignore the blue. The blue is um, only if it's compounded quarterly or semi-annually, then the N that I just erased would represent how often it's compounded. But for annually, no need to have an N there because annually means one. Um, so here's my formula. So my question is going to be, if I give you this money, I compound it annually at this rate, how much would you have after three years? So here's my formula. A is the amount of money I would have at the end of the time that I've invested it. So A equals P is the um, premium, you can say, however, the money that I put in. So that's going to be 600, right? The investment money. And one is the reason they use one here is because if you invest money, you're going to get not only you're going to get your money back, but the interest on top of it. So that's like saying 100%. So that's one plus, the reason I'm using plus is because in interest means you're getting more money. If they use the word like depreciate, maybe if it was a car example or a pair of sneakers, stuff like that depreciates, all right? I don't know if you saw this movie where they said, um, there's a com uh, comparison with things that appreciate like real estate versus things that depreciate like, I don't know, shoes, guns, cars, silly stuff. All right, so my example appreciates, I'm gaining money, so I'm gonna use plus the R, the R is the rate. So what's my rate? 1.6, right? No, 
0.016. Remember, I moved the decimal twice. Close parentheses, raise it to however many years I said. If you were listening, I said three. And just get yourself a calculator and type in 600 times 1.016 to the third power. Remember, exponents first, then multiply, and you'll have your answer, how much money you get at the end. So there's some fun different ways of knowledge of exponents going to help you in not only the real world, but test situations. All right, thanks for watching. See ya.